Okay, introduction to sequences. Okay, um, a sequence is like a list of things, and um, each thing that you put in the list, uh, typically we're talking about a sequence having a pattern to it so that you could keep it going. Uh, sometimes you have in mind that this will be a finite sequence. It starts at a certain number and it continues for a certain number of terms, or it goes from a certain number up to a certain number. Um, uh, sometimes it's infinite, like it's the pattern that just keeps on going with no end to it. All right, so here's a little bit of terminology for you. Uh, these are called the terms or the values of the terms, and so we could call this uh, T for term. Sometimes you just call it A. I don't know, you can put other symbols there you want. The author of this book uses T. And if it's going to be the, uh, like this one, for instance, number 8 here would be uh, T sub 4 would be 8 because this is the fourth term in the sequence. So you just put a subscript on it indicating its position in the sequence, counting from 1. So the first term would be uh, term sub 1. So t sub 1, okay? And so here's t sub 1, t sub 2, and so forth. And so these uh, numbers down here are typically uh, referred to as uh, the uh, term number or simply n. And so if you want to talk about, uh, in general, you might call t sub n. Well, that's, that means that what is the term that would be at the nth position, okay? Now, uh, here's a formal definition. A sequence is a function, okay, whose domain is a set of natural numbers and whose range is a set of term values. So see these little arrows in here? So it's a function, and this is the independent variable down here. And instead of having the domain being all the real numbers, like you can't go in between here, okay, it's discrete lists of things rather than uh, a continuous range of things. Also, it doesn't go to zero or negative. It starts with one and it goes forward from there. Okay. Now, uh, some of the things you want to do with sequences are find the pattern, uh, predict the next few terms, find a formula for the term. In other words, one of the goals here for this pattern, for instance, is you'd like to find a formula. So if you give me n, I'll give you the term that goes in that spot. Like, um, What's, uh, what's number 6 going to be, for instance? Well, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Now, you, you might say you can find the next term by adding 2 each time. If you do it in that way, so each term you just add 2, add 2, add 2, and add 2. You're defining a term in terms of previous terms. Okay, so that's called a recurrence relation. And that's one way of working with these is to be able to figure out each term from the previous one. Now, that's fine, but what if I say, what's the thousandth term, or what's the 27,300 term, okay? Uh, it's very difficult, because you're going to have to work your way up to that by adding two each time. It would be easier uh, for problems like that if you actually had a formula, so that given n, you could find t sub n, okay? And so this kind of a functional kind of a formula, connecting the term number with the value of the term, is one of the goals um, in working with sequences. Now that's not always easy to come up with, but um, it is a goal. It's nice if you can come up with that. Uh, that will help you a lot. All right? Uh, so be able to give the nth term. All right? Let's see if we can for this uh, sequence here. What is this? It's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. You probably recognize this as the even numbers. And so it is the case where you just add two each time. But there's another pattern you can see is notice if you take the n and simply double it, it'll give you uh, the corresponding term value. So the fifth term is going to have a value of 10. The fourth term has a value of 8. And so we can say that t sub n is equal to 2n. And so this kind of a formula, which gives you the term value as a function of the term number is the kind of thing we're actually looking for. Okay. Now one of the useful things to do sometimes is to be able to do a graph. And a graph uh, can give you an indication of the pattern. All right. So let's do a, a graph here. Okay, so if n is 1, so down here we're going to talk about n and up here is t sub n. 
If n is 1, we're up at 2. If n is 2, we're at 4. If n is 3, we're up at 6. For 4, it's 8. For 5, it's 10. Now, it's, it's tempting to just put a straight line through there. In fact, we could do that except for the fact that that straight line seems to imply that there are values everywhere along that line, and that's not true. So it's actually better if you have uh, uh, the facility for doing that is, is if you put a, a dotted line or something like that. The line indicates um, uh, a pattern, but the actual domain is only the natural numbers or the counting numbers. And so it's only these points, these particular points along the line that count as part of your sequence. Okay, So we have found a pattern, we predicted the next uh, few terms, we saw a recurrence relation for the next few terms, and we add two each time. Uh, find a formula for the term, that's where we found that the term number is simply two times the n. Be able to give the nth term. Alright, so we haven't actually done that. What if we have the, the uh, if I want to say give me the 27th term well, I'll just take 27 times 2. So if n is 27, t sub n is uh, 54. 7 times 2 is 14. Yep. Okay. So the 27th term, if you keep this pattern going, is going to be 54. And we got that from this uh, formula that we found. And we did a graph. And notice that it, it's a linear pattern. It's a subset of this line, namely where this line crosses all the whole number of values. All right, here's another pattern. We've got a 1, 3, 5, 7. Notice this one also we can say each time you just add 2. You probably recognize this as the odd numbers. So 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, and so forth. Okay, uh, but let's look at the term values in terms of n. So here the n is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so forth. All right. Uh, is there a relation that you can connect n with t sub n? Okay. Let's do this. Okay. Um, well, think about it. Uh, if I, it looks similar to the previous one in the fact that we add 2 each time. So this is, seems to be going up in a linear manner. Uh, let's, and it seems like it would probably have the same slope, because you go over 1, you go up 2. And so uh, that might be an indication. But we're starting at a different point, aren't we? All right, so what if I, what if I double these? If I double this, I would get 2. If I double this, I'd get 4. If I double this, I'd get 6. And uh, is there some connection between that and the numbers? Well, you might notice that this is one less than this. This is one less than that. So we can come up with the idea that t sub n is 2n minus 1. Okay, so 2n minus 1. Then what if I say, what is number 6? What is the sixth term? Well, 2 times 6 is 12 minus 1. It would be 11. And the seventh term would be 2 times 7 is 14 minus 1 is 13. And what's the 85th term? Well, 2 times 85 minus 1 is 169. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and uh, graph this. Uh, notice here we have 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. So the fifth term is 9 and so forth. All right. And this is a very similar graph to what we did last time. Here, let's get the dashed line of the facility here. Okay, so it uh, looks like it has a slope of 2 and so forth, but uh, and that might help you find the formula. Um, hmm. In fact, that probably does help you find the formula. Let's look at this. What's the intercept here? If I take this line it's going to have an intercept of minus 1. It's almost like we're looking at the equation of the line y equals 2n minus 1, doesn't it? I mean, y equals 2x minus 1, except since we're only dealing with um, uh, whole numbers, 
uh, we use n instead of x in that case. So that actually, the line, uh, if it is a line, it, uh, you could find the equation of the line and that would help you give you the formula, wouldn't it? Okay, let's look at another one. 1, 2, 4, 8. Hmm. So find the pattern, predict the next few terms, all right? Uh, well, a recurrence way to define this is 1, 2, looks like that's double, isn't it? And then doubled again and doubled again. So if you just realize that I'm on a, in a recurring basis, I'm going to simply take the previous value and double it. So this would be 16, and then 32, and then 64, and so forth, all right? But is there some way to connect it to n? So if this is t sub n, and this is n down here is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, uh, is there some way that you can see that? Well, 2 times 2 times 2, since it's 2 times 2 times 2 and so forth, uh, looks like a, a power kind of a function, doesn't it? It looks like an exponential. And if I take um, uh, 2 to the third power, 2 times 2 times 2 would be 2 to the third power, that would give me 8, wouldn't it? 2 to the second power gives me 4, 2 to the first power is 2. So it doesn't look like it's uh, 2 to the nth. It looks like it's 2 to the n minus 1. So if I take n is 2, 2 minus 1 is 1, 2 to the 1 is 2, isn't it? If n is 4, 2 to the 4 minus 1 is 2 to the 3rd, which is 8. And so there's our relationship. And so t, t sub n would be 2 to the n minus 1. All right? So this is... Um, this is an exponential kind of a curve. Okay, let's uh, try plotting this. Uh, the first term is 1, then 2, and then 4, and then uh, 8. Notice it's going up like an exponential, uh, like 2 to the nth power, isn't it? Okay, except it's not 2 to the n, it's 2 to the n minus 1. Notice, uh, by the way, we, we know this in our exponentials uh, chapter, that... Um, an exponential function always hits 1 uh, when uh, the exponential function is 0. Notice it's been shifted over 1 to the right. That's why it's 2 to the n minus 1. Okay, so it looks like an exponential curve, except it's only the whole number of values, and we're starting 1 off from just a pure exponential. Okay, what's this one? This one I'm going to make the, I'm going to go smaller and smaller, so let's do this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I'm going to let this be 1, so these are going to be tenths, and it's going to be easier to plot it that way. So here I have 1. When it's 2, it's going to be half. When it's 3, it's a third, and a third would be uh, point three, uh, 3, something like that. Uh, when it's 4, it's a fourth, or 0.25, okay, 5 would be 0.2, and so forth. So it looks like it's, um, you know, it's like that 1 over x curve we dealt with uh, a couple chapters ago. And, and indeed, it's, if this is, uh, n is 1, 2, 3, 4, it's pretty clearly just the reciprocals. So t sub n is 1 over n. Okay, we have the pattern. Well, each time, uh, this one, the, the recurrence relation is harder to come up with, but the actual formula is easy to come up with. You take n and you take the reciprocal. Uh, but we can still uh, predict any value. And in most cases, it's more valuable to have this uh, straight out formula in terms of n, or the functional relationship between t and n, than it is to have your recurrence relation. Okay. Could we predict the nth term for any n? Well, sure, just take its reciprocal. And here's a graph of the sequence. And so as n gets larger, this uh, function is going to get smaller. The sequence uh, values are going to get smaller. Okay, uh, so much for introduction. And there's quite a few things we're going to learn about sequences in this chapter. And then series following there, and also the difference between a sequence and a series.